Hello! In this discussion video, we will solve some exercises on vectors and some vector operations including vector addition, vector subtraction, and scalar multiplication. Before watching the rest of this video, I encourage you to first watch the two-part lecture videos on this topic posted in our YouTube channel or read the lecture slides uploaded in Ovlet. Let's proceed to the first example. Find the components, magnitude, and direction angles of vector AB, where A is the point square root of 2, 9, negative 3, and B is the point 3 square root of 2, 7, negative 1. To find the components of vector AB, let us first recall that the components of a vector are obtained by subtracting the coordinates of the terminal point with the coordinates of the initial point. Hence, in this example, the vector from point A to point B is the vector AB with components 3 square root of 2 minus square root of 2, 7 minus 9, and negative 1 minus negative 3. Simplifying, we get the vector 2 square root of 2, negative 2, 2. Geometrically, the vector AB is the directed line segment from the point A to the point B in the three-dimensional space. It can also be represented by its position representation or the equivalent vector whose initial point is the origin and whose terminal point has coordinates equal to the components of the vector. Now, recall that the length of the representation of a vector is computed as the principal square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Using this formula, we find that the magnitude of vector AB is equal to the square root of 16, which is 4. Now, we find the direction angles alpha, beta, and gamma of vector AB using its direction cosines. Following the given formula, we have that cosine alpha is equal to 2 square root of 2 over 4, or simply square root of 2 over 2. Cosine beta is equal to negative 1 half, and cosine gamma is equal to 1 half. Using our knowledge on inverse trigonometric functions, we find that alpha is the angle pi over 4, Beta is the angle 2 pi over 3, and gamma is the angle pi over 3. The figure on the right illustrates the position representation of vector AB in the three-dimensional space. Now we move on to the next example. Express the vector PQ equals 5 times i hat minus 8 times j hat in component form and find its terminal point Q given its initial point P. Recall that any vector V with components A, B, and C can be written in terms of the standard basis vectors in R3 as follows. Vector V is equal to A times the unit vector I hat plus B times the unit vector J hat plus C times the unit vector K hat. Hence, our given vector PQ equals 5I hat minus 8j hat plus 0k hat has components 5, negative 8, and 0. We can easily find the coordinates of the terminal point by equating each component of the given vector to the difference of the corresponding coordinates of the terminal point and initial point. That is, if xyz is our terminal point, then the first component of vector pq which is 5, is equal to the first coordinate of the terminal point, which is x, minus the first coordinate of the initial point, which is 4. So we have the equation 5 equals x minus 4. For the second component, we have the equation negative 8 equals y minus 3. And for the third component, we have the equation 0 equals z minus negative 2. Solving for x, y, and z, we find that our terminal point has coordinates 9, negative 5, and negative 2. Moving on to the third example, find the value or values of k so that the vector a with components 2, k, and negative k 
is equal to the vector b with components 2, k cubed, and k squared. First, we recall that two vectors are said to be equal if and only if their corresponding components are equal. Hence, we need to find the value or values of the constant k that satisfies three conditions. First, the first components of vectors a and b must be equal, that is, 2 equals 2. This equality is true for any value of k. Next, the second components must be equal, that is, k equals k cube or k cube minus k equals 0. This equality holds when k equals 0, negative 1, or 1. And lastly, the third components must be equal, that is, negative k equals k squared or k squared plus k equals 0. This is true for k equals 0 and k equals negative 1. Now observe that all three conditions are satisfied when k equals 0 or k is equal to negative 1. Hence, we say that the vector a is equal to the vector b if k is 0 or k is negative 1. Now, for the fourth example, we are asked to determine the value or values of constant c so that the two vectors a and b are parallel. For our convenience, we write the given vectors in their respective coordinate forms. That is, vector a is the vector 2, c, negative 1, and vector b is the vector negative 6, 12, 3. Now we ask, when are two non-zero vectors parallel? This happens precisely when we can write one of the two vectors as a non-zero scalar multiple of the other vector. If we look at the components of vector b, we note that the values negative 6, 12, and 3 all have a common factor of negative 3. Hence, we can write the vector negative 6, 12, 3 as the scalar negative 3 times the vector 2, negative 4, negative 1. This is equivalent to negative 3 times the vector a if we take c to be negative 4. Moving on to the fifth example, we are asked to find the values of k for which the given vector is a unit vector. Recall that a unit vector is a vector with magnitude 1. Hence, we need to find the values of k that satisfies the following equation. Manipulating this equation, we obtain the solutions k equals 0 and k equals 8 over 9. To check, we can substitute the obtained values to our vector and verify if the resulting vector has indeed magnitude 1. For k equals 0, the resulting vector is the unit vector 0, 0, 1. Hence, k equals 0 is a true solution. For k equals 8 over 9, we obtain the following resulting vector and we find that this vector also has magnitude 1. Hence, k equals 8 over 9 is also a true solution to this problem. Now, for our last example, we are asked to find the resulting vectors obtained by performing a combination of vector operations to the given vectors a, b, and c. Before we begin with our solutions, let's recall the following formula for the scalar multiplication, vector addition, and vector subtraction. For our convenience, we write each vector in the respective component form. So vector A is the vector 2, 1, negative 5. Vector B is the vector from point P to point Q, which has components 4 minus 5, which is negative 1, 7 minus negative 1, which is 8, and 13 minus 9, which is 4. So vector B is the vector negative 1, 8, 4. And lastly, vector C has components 9, negative 12, 0. The figure illustrates the respective position representation of the three vectors in the three-dimensional space. For the first item, we are asked to find the vector A minus B minus C. That is, 
the vector 2, 1, negative 5, minus the vector negative 1, 8, 4, minus the vector 9, negative 12, 0. Since vector addition and subtraction are performed component-wise, then the resulting vector a minus b minus c has components 2 minus negative 1 minus 9, which is negative 6, 1 minus 8 minus negative 12, which is 5, and negative 5 minus 4 minus 0, which is negative 9. Hence, the vector a minus b minus c is the vector negative 6, 5, negative 9. This vector is represented in the three-dimensional space by the blue line segment in the figure. For the second item, we need to find the vector negative 4a plus 2b plus 3c. Recall that multiplying a scalar to a vector is equivalent to multiplying that scalar to each component of the vector. Hence, negative 4 times the vector a is equal to the vector negative 8, negative 4, 20, and 2 times the vector b is equal to the vector negative 2, 16, 8, and 3 times vector c is equal to the vector 27, negative 36, 0. Adding the three vectors, we get the resulting vector with components 17, negative 24, 28. Now for item 3, we want to find the vector 5a minus 1 third c. Again, applying our formula for scalar multiplication and vector subtraction, we have the vector 10, 5, negative 25 minus the vector 3, negative 4, 0 which is the vector 7, 9, negative 25. For the fourth item, we want to find the vector 4c over the magnitude of c. Since the magnitude of c is equal to the square root of 81 plus 144, which is the square root of 225, which is equal to 15, we have 4c over the magnitude of c equals 4 over 15 times the vector 9, negative 12, 0. Multiplying the scalar to each component of the vector and simplifying, we get the resulting vector with components 12 over 5, negative 16 over 5, 0. For item 5, we want to find the unit vector opposite the direction of vector A. First, let's recall that if we have a vector V, then, the vector with the same magnitude but opposite the direction of v is the vector negative v. Moreover, the unit vector in the same direction of v is the vector u sub v. Hence, in this example, our desired vector is the vector negative u sub a, which is equal to negative 1 over the magnitude of a times the vector a. Since the magnitude of a is equal to the square root of 30, we have negative 1 over the square root of 30 times the vector 2, 1, negative 5. Simplifying, our obtained vector has components negative square root of 30 over 15, negative square root of 30 over 30, and square root of 30 over 6. For item 6, we want to find a vector twice the length of b and in the same direction as b. Let's recall that for any real number c and vector a, the resulting vector ca has magnitude equal to the absolute value of c times the magnitude of a. Moreover, ca has the same direction as vector a if c is positive and it goes opposite the direction of a if c is negative. Hence, our desired vector in this item is the vector 2b with the components negative 2, 16, and 8. Now for the last item, we are asked to find the vector of length 2 that goes opposite the direction of vector b. We know that the unit vector opposite the direction of vector b is the vector negative u sub b. Since the desired vector should be of length 2, we just multiply 2 to the vector negative u sub b. 
that is negative 2 times the unit vector u sub b is equal to negative 2 over the magnitude of b times the vector b. Or negative 2 over 9 times the vector negative 1, 8, 4. This is equivalent to the vector 2 over 9, negative 16 over 9, and negative 8 over 9. That ends our discussion for the introduction to vectors and some vector operations. If you have any questions, feel free to contact your lecture or discussion class teachers. Bye!